I believe that today, um, when you are talking about trends or, or, or new path for uh, freedom uh, of expression, first is to recognize that when we are talking about uh, the freedom of expression of artists, we are talking about cultural rights and how the cultural rights have to be not only uh, put at the front of the discussions, but also that uh, it implies obligation and responsibilities from everybody. Ensure that those rights are respected and they are vocal and at the same time it has to come from uh, the decision-making uh, people that are uh, leading uh, institutions or uh, public institutions in ensuring that those rights are respected and are fully respected and not only in partial uh, ways. So yes, today I feel that uh, there is more solidarity between the whole sector. Even I believe that Covid helped a little bit to take in consideration today uh, some of the, the, the issue around freedom and also it means to to fight for some of the rights that were not included in the past and that today become essential for uh, livelihood of artists or for the role of artists in society. The, all these two days there was a lot of, of speeches on elevating the voices of uh, those who feel that uh, their freedom is uh, in danger. And I believe that it's easy when you are in some democracies to speak about how important it is to, to get out and, and, and shout it out loud, uh, the freedom that, uh, that it's part of, of what we recognize as human rights. It's more difficult in some countries where you know that your life is threatened because you are defending some of those uh, essential human rights. It's very difficult from an office in Paris or in Stockholm to stand up and say, please, you have to fight for this. No, I believe that each context is very unique. And in this sense, we can also understand why some artists have to leave the countries to defend those rights from uh, neighboring countries or from other countries because they can and protect some of uh, of the right of other artists that states in the country. So, and what is important is to also advocate in the right places. And I believe that uh, special rapporteurs for the UN are very important to amplify those voices. Agencies, resolution at multilateral level are very important. So, there is an infinity of uh, ways to, to make noise. What is important is that silence never help. If you want something to get out, somebody have to echo those voices. UNESCO and more than 150 ministers that come together with a declaration where they put uh, cultural rights at the top of the agenda is uh, how we are able in each of our instruments that are the cultural conventions and recommendation to extract where uh, cultural rights are present and that it as part of uh, what is essential um, in this holistic uh, perspective of culture. First is to ensure that we understand that even in some of these instruments like World Heritage we are talking about communities and those communities have to be respected in their rights, have to benefit from whatever comes out the managing of those sites how we consider indigenous rights in those places where there are indigenous communities are right to be part of all decision and all discussion uh, around the, the, the strategies for the development of those sites, how the discussion around illicit trafficking institution of cultural goods become a real dialogue and not confrontation between global north and global south how we ensure that when we are defending diversity of cultural expression today in the digital era 
it is also considered as one of the principal elements of the discussion and can be also uh, extended to all new technology that will come in the future.